This mandala again takes a lot of time to be completed for some reason. As well, I'm dealing with current stressors and then that kills off creativity. But yeah, slowly and steadily it will be completed at some point. And I'm always getting recharged by the forest, which then puts me back into the window of tolerance. When you are in your window of tolerance, you feel like you can deal with whatever's happening in your life. You might feel stress or pressure, but it doesn't bother you too much. This is the ideal place to be. And this is the rest and digest. Where you can also be creative. It is such a difference being in your window of tolerance and then switching into survival mode. It's such a difference how I react. Then it's indeed low capacity for socializing. It's just too much. You cannot imagine to do stuff. It's too much, it will stress you out even more, it will create anxiety that's irrational. Oh man, it's uh, such a difference. And when you switch back to the window of tolerance, then suddenly you think the same thing that caused massive anxiety to you before in the state of stress, survival mode, suddenly it becomes doable. You think, yes, I can do that. It's so fascinating how the perspective changes between being in survival mode and being in your own window of tolerance. Like completely different perspective. I'm totally flabbergasted by observing this change of perception in myself. And right now I am here and I am creative. I'm working on my mandala again. Yesterday, whole different thing. Until yesterday. It was all about self-preservation, survival. You cannot do art when you are in survival mode. Forget about it. And I realize even my prosody has changed. It has a different ring to it, my own voice. Hmm, interesting. What stress can do to the body and nervous system. Holy cow. You become completely different human. When you are in your window of tolerance, you are basically the Buddha. You think, yeah, you can tackle all that stuff that is thrown at you. You will be okay. And then when you fall out of your window of tolerance because the stress is just too much, it will trigger the survival response. And then you are in survival mode and become a different person. Literally thinking in two different perspectives. The issue is, when people are constantly in their survival mode, they think that's the real persona. But it isn't. You only realize that when you finally get into your own 
window of tolerance, the rest and digest state. When you feel happy, content, okay, and also like to actually socialize. And you feel compassion for other people, you feel compassion for yourself. It's a completely different state of mind. And you only realize that when you are in it. And which also brings to mind the same thing with diet. When you eat in a certain way, you just feel that's it, that's the normal state. However, when I switched to a meat based way of eating, just because my health was going to shit and I had to try everything possible to change that. Well, hmm. I never thought it possible how my mind could switch from one state to another. Just like that, because I changed my diet. I think this is the gut brain connection. So if your gut gets repaired and your body gets what it needs, all the nutrients, and it can operate in the state it is designed to operate from a state of health. When you give the brain the fat it needs, so you eat enough animal fats, I'm not talking about vegetable oils shit, no, the animal fats, when you have enough of that in your diet, then your brain will switch on like a massive light bulb, just like that. And you only realize what actually is possible through the change of diet when you try it before you don't know. You think that's normal, feeling shitty and being in pain and stuff. That's just normal because you are no longer 20, right? Everyone gets sick. That's normal. No, it isn't. It isn't. If you eat in a way that helps your body be healthy, then you see the change that is possible when doctors have told you, oh, we cannot do anything because they don't know. However, one needs to take into consideration our left hemisphere dominant society and the stress that is caused by our way of unnatural living. So everybody is anxious, everybody is stressed, Everybody is either in hypoarousal or hypoarousal. Almost nobody is within the window of tolerance. And then, of course, from that perspective, we will leash out at each other or be unavailable, not interested, numb, frozen. That's the issue. 
So the only thing what you can do is finding a way around that which puts you into the window of tolerance. So what I'm doing is extended forest walking and working with the red healer. Microdosing with the tea. That keeps me sane. But still I can get very much triggered. And only when I switch back, I realize how much I have been triggered in this state or in this state. Ah, <sighs> So I hope I can extend this window of tolerance so that stuff doesn't stress me out as much. But then I am autistic, so... My window of tolerance will always be a bit narrower. So I have to do everything possible to keep me within the window of tolerance. That includes standing up for myself. Because the issue is in survival mode. You just operate in a very different state of mind. You think and act along very different train tracks when you are in survival mode. And what helped was an extended forest walk. Going to the forest it's just so recharging. It's amazing what it can do. Just one walk, it will completely clear off anything that lingers in your system. Wipe the slate clean, so to speak. Of course, the food intake is just as important. Give your body what it needs. And my brain comes alive when I eat meat. It's so amazing every single time this happens. That's how my brain feels after having eaten. And then I have the wonderful tea to go along with it, help with anxiety. That's the perfect match which then also will help with creativity. And making fun of really idiotic, rigid, misinformed perceptions of what autism really is. That's all you can do. Making yourself laugh. Making fun of these people who think they know better. And meanwhile, enjoying the beauty of everything around you, nature, and even collecting feathers. Because that's all what you can do. Our society has become left hemisphere dominant. Compartmentalizing. Seeing things in only one way. Rigid, judgmental. So, yeah. That's difficult when you come from rather this perspective. The right hemisphere dominance. So that's a clash, right? And all you can do is keep yourself sane. 
within the system and still keep doing what you love doing regardless and this mandala turns out to be really interesting <laughs> um, I'm not sure what will come out of it and if I like it or not <laughs> And each mandala is like a cleansing process because everything you go through during the time you are working on that mandala that goes inside the mandala and purifies it in a way like a fire. Sacred fire. The space you dive into when working on a mandala, that's like somewhere in between above clouds, where synchronicity happens, the feel-good place. And from that again, you gain inner strength. Seeds have been planted, they just need to grow into a big tree. Yesterday I followed my intuition. It was very interesting how I was guided to another part of forest. And there I found this feather. and many more bird trees which then led me along a wonderful path I have not walked before very good spot to find what I'm looking for and you know what in autumn And then, when you are well rested, well fed, not stressed within the window of tolerance, then creativity comes online automatically. So finally I got it right. <laughs> I wasn't happy with that dark, almost blackish color. Uh, it's just too dark and I wanted a fine, you know, from purple to a bit darker and yet a bit darker. That's what I wanted. So now it's getting there from this black to indigo. See the difference? That's what I wanted. So now I know how to get there. Ah, so relieved. I need to get the colors right. <laughs> Autistic perfectionism.